Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into the fascinating process of how sugar is made from millions of tons of sugar cane in factories. Have you ever wondered how the sweetener in your coffee, or the sugar in your coffee, in your favorite dessert, makes it from the field to your table? Well, buckle up because we're about to take you on a comprehensive journey through each step of this sweet transformation. Sugarcane, also known as Saccharum officinarum, is a tall perennial grass that grows in tropical and subtropical regions. It is the main source of sugar production, accounting for about 80% of the world's sugar supply. Supply. Each stalk of sugarcane is filled with sucrose-rich juice, which makes it a highly sought-after crop. It takes an average of 18 months for sugarcane to mature and be ready for harvesting. Once the cane is fully grown, it is cut down and transported to the factory. The journey of sugar begins in the vast fields of sugar cane. Sugar cane is a tall, fibrous grass that succeeds in tropical and subtropical climates. To harvest this green gold, workers or machines cut the stalks at the base. The traditional methods involve manual cutting with knives, whereas modern technology sees the use of specialized harvesters that can cut, strip and transport the cane in one sweep. Once harvested, the sugar cane must reach the mill as quickly as possible, ideally within 24 to 48 hours, to ensure the highest yield of sucrose. Transporting millions of tons of sugarcane from the fields to the factories is no small feat. Trucks, tractors and trains specially designed for bulk cargo efficiently move the cane. Timing is crucial during this phase. Any delays can cause the sugarcane to start fermenting and lose its sucrose content. Upon reaching the factory, the cane is weighed and inspected before being sent to the next step in the production process. Some sugar mills are strategically located near fields to minimize transportation time and costs. Upon arrival at the factory, the sugar cane undergoes an extensive preparation process to extract its sugary juice. Initially, it is weighed and tested for sucrose content. The cane is then thoroughly washed to remove any soil and impurities. After cleaning, the cane is chopped into small pieces, typically using rotating knives or shredders. This increases the surface area, making it easier to extract the juice the heart of the sugar-making pro. Next up is the extraction, where the prepared cane is crushed to extract the juice. The juicy cane pieces pass through a series of mills consisting of large, heavy rollers. These rollers crush and squeeze out the juice, which is then collected and sent for further processing. The leftover fibrous material called bagasse is often burnt to generate steam and electricity, embodying sustainable practices in many modern mills. The extracted juice is a muddy, dark liquid containing not just sucrose but also impurities like soil, plant fibers and other organic materials. S. Lime is added to the cane juice to raise its pH level, which helps coagulate the impurities. The mixture is then heated and treated with chemicals to remove any remaining solids to purify this juice. It's directed into large clarification tanks. Here, lime or other clarifying agents are added to neutralize the acidity and precipitate the impurities. The juice is then heated and the impurities rise to the surface or settle at the bottom, leaving a clearer, lighter liquid ready for the next stage. The clarified juice still contains a significant amount of water. To concentrate the sucrose, the juice must undergo evaporation. This process involves boiling the juice in a series of evaporators, which remove water content by turning it into steam. The result is a thick, syrupy liquid called masaquite. This high concentration syrup moves on to the final stages of becoming ground sugar. Crystallization is where liquid sugar turns into the granules we know and love. The syrup is transferred to vacuum pans, large vessels where it's further heated under reduced pressure to avoid caramization. Seed crystals are introduced to the syrup, around which sugar crystals begin to form. As the syrup continues to evaporate, it reaches a point of supersaturating, leading to the growth of larger sugar crystals. The result is the pure, white sugar that we all know and love. It's then ready to be shipped off to stores and used in various food and beverage products. Once the crystals have formed, the mixture of sugar crystals and molasses known as mother liquor is spun in a centrifuge. This mechanism functions much like a household washing machine spin cycle. The spinning action separates the molasses from the crystals. The result is raw sugar which has a light brown color due to residual molasses sticking to the crystals. The raw sugar crystals are still slightly damp when they exit the separator. Therefore, they are conveyed to dryers, typically large rotating drums, where hot air evaporates the remaining moisture. After drying, the sugar is cooled using cool, 
ambient air to prevent the crystals from clumping together. By the end of this stage, we have dry, raw sugar crystals ready for further refinement if desired. For those who prefer white, refined sugar, the raw sugar undergoes further processing. The raw sugar is melted back into syrup, re-clarified to remove any remaining impurities, and then re-crystallized. This extra processing step removes all remaining molasses, resulting in the pure white sugar commonly used in baking, cooking, and as a sweetener in beverages. With the sugar now in its final form, it's ready for packaging. Factories often employ automated systems that measure and pack the sugar into various sizes, from small packets for everyday use to large bags for industrial purposes. Once packaged, the sugar is dispatched to warehouses or directly shipped to retailers, supermarkets and manufacturers, ensuring it reaches consumers worldwide. And there you have it. From field to factory to your kitchen, that's how millions of tons of sugarcane are transformed into the sweetener we all use every day. From the fields to our tables, sugar passes through various stages and processes before reaching its final form. The journey is a testament to the hard work and dedication of farmers, workers and modern technology that make this sweetener available to us. Next time you enjoy a spoonful of sugar in your tea or use it in baking, remember the long journey it took from the sugar cane fields to your kitchen. Whether it's granulated, brown or powdered sugar, every form has a unique story and process behind it. And that's what makes this sweetener of life truly special. And there you have it, the incredible journey of how millions of tons of sugarcane are transformed into the sugar we consume daily. From the fields to the factory, each stage is a testament to meticulous engineering, sophisticated technology, and the hard work of countless individuals. Next time you sprinkle sugar into your cup of tea or bake a cake, you'll have a deeper appreciation for where that sweetness came from. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more behind the scenes looks at how everyday items are made. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe our channel for more creative videos.